it's late in the evening and I'm about to get started making a quick supper for me and Katie and Matt. It's kind of late in the day for me to get started, but it's it's been a busy day today. So I'm going to make something really easy and quick. I'm going to make BLTs and I'm going to make cheese potatoes. The cheese potatoes recipe is actually in mine and Jim Casta's new book, uh, Celebrating Southern Appalachian Food, Recipes and Stories from Mountain Kitchens. If you've missed the hoopla about the book, this is what it kind of what it looks like. And if you've missed picking up a copy, if you haven't got a copy yet, I'll put that link in the description below. But this recipe is in chapter 13, and that chapter focuses on root crops. There's a little bit of commentary before each chapter, and I'm not going to read you all of it, but I'm going to read you just a portion of this. A couple of generations ago, an Appalachian garden without taters or a main meal without this amazingly versatile root crop was almost unimaginable. This staple of the regional diet remains of critical importance. As one commenter on Tipper's blog put it, as long as you have a tater, you have a banquet. Or in the words of Jim's Grandpa Joe, eat taters, they'll stick to a man's ribs. After all, most of those residing in the region had Scots-Irish roots and a notable, though often overlooked aspect of that background was heavy dietary reliance on root crops, which of course, potatoes is one of the root crops. That couldn't be more true, of course, in days gone by, but also today, the potato, taters as we say, play such a role, uh, kind of like one of the foundation, foundational elements of Appalachian foodways. I mean, if you have taters and beans and cornbread, uh, you have a food feast, uh, really something good to eat, but what else could you need? I mean, it's good for you, stick to your ribs, like Grandpa Joe said, uh, but also so tasty, so kind of hearty and um, heartwarming at the same time as filling your belly, kind of comfort. It's one of those comforting foods. So as far as the cheese taters go, cheese potatoes, it's very, very easy and kind of a quick way to put a, a different spin on maybe the, the typical uh, or more traditional soupy potatoes. I grew up eating soupy potatoes. I still make them. That's what my family called them. They're really just stewed potatoes. We just always called them soupy potatoes. You just, you know, boil your potatoes in whatever kind of chunks you want. I make mine kind of on the smaller side. My Granny Gazzy, she made hers, me and Paul always thought, in the shape of boats. She just quartered the potatoes so they were big pieces, but we thought they looked like boats, like little boats. Um, and season them with some butter or whatever kind of oil you like, some salt and pepper, and just cook them until they're, they're really soft and mm, they're so good. I had soupy taters last night. As I said, taters are, are play an important role in our food ways. So for the cheese potatoes, what you're going to need though, is you're going, and this is uh, like many of the recipes in our cookbook, you can kind of morph it into what you want. Maybe you need uh, a larger portion than what I'm going to describe. Maybe you need a smaller portion. The recipes are really versatile in that you could enlarge or uh, decrease as needed. You kind of make it your own kind of thing. But for today, what I'm going to do is I've got four large potatoes, so about that size. I've already peeled them. And then I'm going to slice those into like french fries, fairly thin. I've got salt and pepper. I'm just going to use that to taste. I've got one small can of evaporated milk. It's about five ounces, so if you have a larger one and just need to use part of it. And I've got one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. You could use any cheese you wanted to. Uh, I would advise for any kind of melting like this or macaroni and cheese or anything, if you shred your own, it takes a little bit more time. It's cheaper though in the long run and it melts better. It melts more evenly because there's not been a um, like a non-clumping agent put on it to keep it from sticking together in the bag when you buy it already shredded. So if you if you can take that extra little time to shred it yourself, that, that really makes a difference. And then I have a half a cup of butter just all diced up. So my next step is I'm going to uh, slice these potatoes into those thin french fries. And then I'm just going to lay them in the bottom of a pan, a 9 by 13 pan. If you don't have a 9 by 13 pan, you could divide them into two smaller pans. You could even use a pie plate, whatever you have on hand. If you have, you know, decrease your potatoes or use multiple pie plates. I'm going to season them to taste. And then we're going to pour the evaporated milk over them, sprinkle with the cheese, sprinkle with the butter. And then we're going to bake it uncovered in the oven for 400, at 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Your oven may take longer 
or might take less so you'll just have to keep track on them but when they're fork tender and when the top kind of gets kind of a golden cheese brown you'll know that they're ready and one other tip um, it's kind of a little trick that's plenty good enough that's great uh, you could add any kind of seasonings you want like I'm just using salt, salt and pepper but kind of to make it look a little more pretty or a little bit more festive is you can add sprinkle parsley on top now in the winter time I use dried parsley I just sprinkle it and it leaves some little green green specks throughout the the cheese and potatoes makes it look real real pretty of course this is summertime almost summertime I guess it is technically is it technically summer no I don't guess so I guess we're still in spring still in spring feels like summer though so I've got parsley growing outside so I've got me a little sprig I'm just going to chop it up and um, sprinkle it on top but first I'm going to chop up my potatoes okay I've got them all chopped up now I'm going to start laying them in here now sometimes what happens is if your potatoes like mine were tonight really big you may run out of room and if you do like I said just grab you out another little pan and, and make two pans of them but you can stack them pretty pretty good and even put them on top of each other I wouldn't put them too thick but definitely you can you can put them doesn't have to be so much a single layer two layers would be fine Sometimes I stack some at the ends too. Now I'm going to season to taste and I'm just using salt and pepper. You could use whatever you wanted to use. Garlic salt would be good, oregano, sky's the limit, some kind of steak seasoning or favorite thing like that. And then I'm going to pour the evaporated milk over them. Just kind of in a all over. And I'm going to take my cheese, and you could again use a different kind of cheese, add more, mix it up and use two different kinds, add more than just one layer, or I mean more than one, just one kind of cheese, whatever. And I'm going to put my little pieces of butter around. I've got my parsley that I chopped, so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it all over the top. Again, I've used dried parsley and it works just as well. Mm, parsley smells so clean and fresh somehow. Now I'm going to bake it uncovered at 400 degrees for like I said 25 to 30 minutes you'll be able to tell it'll get really bubbly and the cheese will look great and you can always stick a knife or a toothpick or something in or a fork and see if your potatoes are tender enough and once it's done I'll show you what it looks like okay you don't like a lot of that Katie and Matt are fixing their plate here. We've got some fresh onions and lettuce and radishes from the garden. Pretty soon we'll have a tomato, but that one's not from our garden. It's store-bought produce stand tomato. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, bacon's hot. You don't like a tomato on, ah! your, on your BLT? You just like a uh -huh. BL? No tomato. You're right. I don't want no tomato on it. I want it just like that. Okay. You want some bacon lettuce mayor. Cheese fries. Cheesy fries. Cheesy fries. Everything's hot in here. Cheesy fries. Well, what's 
What's this green stuff on a cheesy fries? It's parsley. It's good. Okay, that's what Katie wanted. Thank you. Hard day at work, Matt. Well, it wasn't too bad. Well, hard to see, man. <laughs> Matt had to go by Miss Cindy's and do some work, so that's why we're eating later than usual. Well, one of the reasons. A busy day. Out of the garden, just picked it. Nice. Once again, you're a peach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thanks. Don't you think that's nice? It is nice. I said thanks. Thank you. I thought you was being sarcastic. No, I'm not. I like to be called a peach. Well, it's meant to be a compliment, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, peaches are. Pretty nice thing, so nice to be compared to a peach. Mm -hmm. I tell Corey and Katie they're Georgia peaches since they were born in Gainesville. You probably noticed Matt and Katie left the radishes. They don't like them like I do. I like to slice mine in little pieces and put salt on them. They're so good. Corey likes radishes, so she's she kind of inherited it from me. I guess. Matt says he doesn't care. It's one of the things, few things that he does not like, which is radishes. I also like to, my little green onions, like to mound up some a little salt and dip every bite in salt. Yes, I like salt. But I think a lot of people in Appalachia do that with their onions. You'll have to, have to tell me if that's something you do. I love BLTs, but Matt's right. Using that lettuce from the garden, it just takes it up somehow. A notch now what will really be good is in you know a month or so when we can go outside and get a Cherokee purple tomato straight off the vine and then make a BLT with it Matt looks forward to the first uh, tomato sandwich each year he kind of it's kind of like a uh, tradition to go get that first tomato still warm from the sunshine and bring it in and actually make a sandwich with it now for our BLTs or tomato sandwich or anything, we like to use light bread. So that's what we call light bread is just sandwich bread, white bread, store-bought bread. I've heard it called all those things. And I have a, a nice little series about light bread being used in Appalachia, kind of the food ways of, of light bread in Appalachia. So if you've missed any of those, I'll link to it. Things like fried jelly sandwiches and um, banana sandwiches. Of course, you gotta have egg sandwiches. And things like BLT, peanut butter and jelly. There's, you know, the sky's just kind of the limit. I'm about to forget my tomato, though. I don't want to do that. Get my tomato. Get my bacon. Mix my hands a little. And then get me some of those wonderful cheese fries. So really quite a simple meal, but a tasty one nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed seeing one of the recipes in mine and Jim's cookbook. As the weeks and months go by, I'm sure I'll be sharing more. Some of them, of course, I've already shared in videos. Some of the, those, you know, with Arsh potato cake comes to mind. Of course, biscuits and cornbread. I have videos about all those. All those recipes are in the cookbook. But I'll be sharing some of the ones I've not done a video on yet. As always, I'm glad you stopped by to help me celebrate Appalachia, and I hope you drop back by often.